in our first conversation with Mike and Lizakis on the farm Niet Verdient. Uh, I was born in 1949 in Cyprus. So he sent me to South Africa because my two older brothers were already here. They put me to learn the trade in Fontana Bakeries, which used to be owned by my cousin, Taki Xenobulos, and my brother. I mean, in, in the restaurant business, I should actually say, you meet a lot of people. I thought, okay, game farming, he doesn't know enough about, I'll be the expert. And I saw the first Heart of Beers babies running. And th that was the most amazing feeling for me. It was just something that made me decide that this is very rewarding. And that was the beginning. And we had the first game sale in 1982 with animals coming from this farm. We continue our conversation and Mike tells us more about the early days of the game industry. 8,500 rand for a buffalo in 1983 when Impala was selling for a hundred rand and Kudus for a thousand, it was a lot of money. Everybody after the auction walked around and they said to me, Mike, buy a halak. You'll never see it again. And I laughed and said, well, you know, and they were absolutely right. We never saw it again. Uh, but they were talking about it's never going to be a day and a half thousand again. It will be less. The next year they went to 12 and a half, then to 16, then to 32, and then to the crazy prices eventually of millions. Um, because of the success of that first sale, I realized that exotics are important, not exotics, but rare species. Because we had animals in South Africa, but those years the numbers were nowhere to the numbers we have today. Uh, we were catching the majority of the animals that they were coming into the market. They were not really coming from game farms. They were coming from open farms that people were getting permission to capture because there wasn't enough animals in game farms or most of the game farms, they were just starting. So they weren't selling as many animals. I then looked at it and I said, okay, where else can I find buffalo? Because disease-free buffalo were only coming out of Adol National Park. And you put your name on a list and you wait forever. You're never going to get any. So people were getting more and more interested in, in game and more interested in buffalo. So I looked it around and I had a friend that... Um, brought a man from Holland who was a trader in animals so that um, they were catching some animals at the Kruger of Game Reserve to send overseas. And they come to the restaurant for lunch and we hit it off very well. So we landed up having dinner and I said, you know, I'm interested in animals. Um, he was looking for animals to take overseas and I was looking for buffalo to bring to South Africa. And he says to me, but you know, we've got a lot of buffalo in Europe that nobody wants. The zoos don't want them. Uh, they got too many. A few private breeders don't want them. So I set off the next morning to Pretoria, went and said with the veterinary department and said, okay, I want to bring in buffalo. They in Europe, they've been in zoos for a long time. They don't carry diseases. Uh, what can we do to bring them in? On the beginning, they were a little bit difficult. Um, I had a veterinarian from Canada that was working for me uh, on the ostrich farming side, Bob Keffen. Um, then I had um, Jaime Ibedis from the Pretoria Zoo. And I got them together and I said, Let's beat this. Let's find a way that we can bring the, the buffaloes in because they, they're clean. There is no, no problem. So they eventually they said to me, OK, give me a list of which countries, which places there is buffalo. We did that and finally got the first permit to bring in buffalo from Europe. It was a very big learning curve for all of us. Um, I traveled to Europe three different times. Uh, my wife was complaining that I'm spending too much money. 
uh, chasing buffalo. I'm neglecting the restaurants and uh, everything else. Uh, I'm chasing my my hobbies and not my business. Uh, but then um, when I brought them in for a cost of about 4,000 Rand and sold them for 16,000 Rand at the next auction, uh, she got quite happy with it, you know. So <laughs> eventually we, we carried on. Then um, Roan were very, very rare in South Africa. I then um, managed to get a few out of different zoos in Europe. The first ones actually came out of Portugal. Then um, also sold for quite a lot of money. I think 24,000 Rand. Uh, that was the first time Roan Antelope went on an auction. And when we got a prize like this, we obviously started thinking, what's next? And I brought a few more in. I started breeding them, um, a few more people. And I must point out uh, the one time I brought in in the Transvaal Nature Conservation Fauna and Flora, uh, Dr. S. S. Duplessis he says to me, you know, you have just increased the population of Rhone by 5% by bringing in five animals. Uh, this is how low the numbers were in, in South Africa. Uh, from that time on, because we didn't know the value of game, nobody had an idea what, it, what it's an animal worth. Uh, for a bottle of whiskey or brandy and a couple of boxes of biscuits, uh, visiting friends uh, on the farms. I'll be able to shoot a couple of kudus, um, crop permits. I will shoot, shoot out at night and shoot five, six kudus, take one and leave the rest for the farmer uh, because there was no value in these animals. We needed to find a way where animals will be value to have a value. By that time, I was already involved in the Transvaal Game Breeders Association. And we then started thinking, which is the best way to put a value on an animal's head and get people to know what they're worth. And we started highlighting every year a species, selecting a very special animal or two or five and highlight them and sell them which we did that also even with little blue tigers, which we brought and had them on display at Sun City on the auctioneer's box. And Fred Kelly bought them for something like 1,500 or 2,000 Rand, if I remember correctly, which all of a sudden there was a big interest in, in blue tigers, you know, and that's what we have achieved. Next time, when we continue our conversation with Mike Inglisakis. We have managed to solve a lot of the problems the industry had uh, about uh, ownership of animals, adequate fencing rules, uh, permits, um, permission to keep animals, permission to hunt. A lot of more people got interested, obviously, a lot of people that bought animals at my early sales and bought animals everywhere else. Now the numbers were increasing. And that is exactly what happened. We brought in Sable and Cecil from Zimbabwe. That pushed the price of sable up and contrary to whatever everybody thought, more animals, more buyers, more animals, better prices. We now are getting farmers that in the dry time they will plant crops for the kudus because the people from Johannesburg and Pretoria and everywhere they wanted to hunt. And it was built one brick at a time. It wasn't that we woke up one morning and we were in the game farming industry or in the game farming business. By then also we started getting more and more animals out of the national parks because the national parks also realized there is money to be made.